hello everyone welcome to another video in this video we're going to create this a beautiful amazon 2.0 website as you see that will be the first look of our website so we have our header we have the bottom header we have our banner with auto sliding then we have our the scenario for viewing the products so in the product we have the product card if you hover on that as you see particularly you can see so many parameters here we're gonna discuss it before just first view all over the website as you see in the bottom we have the footer with particular screen ratios if you click it will take to that particular scenario so let's roll back to the header so in the header we have our logo we have our delivery to the for the location then we have our search bar in the search bar if we type something as you see automatically it generating the survey of which is that available for matching with that scenario so if we search for what as you see it's not matching but if it's matching with that it will appear if we just go with that okay that's coming here appearing so what if happen if you just write something then you just don't want to see it if you just click somewhere else it's disappear and you can just view the pages but if you just go and activate the search bar only then it will activate again so that's the scenario which is happening also in the amazon we are going to create that portion too so now what will happen if we click any of that product if i click in that powder canister as you see we are coming in the single page scenario we're gonna come back here again but let's roll back in the phone page now we have also that hello sign in button so if we click here we can actually go and make sign in we have our mark and favorite we have our card so if we click it will take that particular pages then we have our other parameter and it's saying please sign in to access your card so without sign in if even we click in the card it will not take us to that particular page so that is the banner which we're gonna create it as you see it's simple and very slick so now we have our product card whenever we hover as you see the percentage ratio is also highlighted and in the product card as you see we have also one favorite button if you click here is essence ma added successfully if we just click again it just removed from there and whenever i'm adding you see the number number is also adding there so now what if we are adding that product at to cart by the way we're going to manage our store using the justin so it will be so simple to create and pretty much very effective if we click add to cart as you see it's already added to cart you can see it's added already and then we have one value here we can increase the value here we can decrease but as you see whenever the value is one we cannot decrease more because we cannot delete the product from here if we want to delete we need to roll back to the card so let's add some of more the product from here let's go to see the details here as you see in the details also in the left side we have three images and the first image as you see highlighted mark which we can see that is active if we click the other one is getting active uh, and the and not before one is getting inactive so with that we can make active and inactive portion now what will happen if we just click add to cart from here the same thing so we're going to use a same add to cart button and in our entire application to keep it simple and reasonable so if we just add more product you can see it's just increasing in the card so now here is details here the name the price ratio and also the review so you see that 2.8 means to have the exact value then the other value is coming a little bit uh, lighter so you can feel the differences how many people are viewing this and how much you are going to save from that product blah 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 so every single thing even the review is coming here for this product so now let's roll back again if we just visit another product and that loading is providing from the next year's loading parameter so let's add here and we cannot go in the card without accessing the sign in so let's go and click on sign in page and we are using that auth js for creating the signing and you can use a multiple parameter but right now we are following only that google parameter it depends on you you can just go and follow through to create some more parameter so let's go back in the card if we go in the card as you see we have our product here and in the card on the details in the order summary we have our subtotal we have our discount then we have the exact value which going to be as the payable amount for our price section so now that's my dashboard in my stripe payment section the previous value is 47.33 so if we just create this checkout it should be 
2.07 right so now from here you can increase the quantity and if you want you can delete the product and each and every action we have that beautiful toaster is coming from react hot toast so now let's make a payment of 991.32 and as you see in the card we have five products so let's click on the checkout and after clicking in the checkout we're going to redirect to our entire operation to that checkout page if you roll back just go backward it will just click uh just cancel the uh, payment and it will take you to the cancel screen but we're gonna make a successful payment here so i'm gonna provide my email and provide the default value for the card which is 424242 and a valid amount 123 should be the cbc default cbc number and the name let's start payment so after finishing the payment what i'm gonna land is my success screen with an id as you see that's the success screen and i'm getting the success id to come in within that screen as you see my card is getting empty because i already created the product the purchased the product so no need to go back to the car so let's continue the shopping and if i come here and also hitting just refresh button to see what are the amount is available if it's just entering or not okay it's loading okay now as you see 991.32 is already having the payment if you click on that you can just get the details about the products you purchase about the quantity you purchase the price you have been uh, making through as you see so how much is stripe gonna deduct from there how much the actual value gonna profit from there so each and every value even the card details all are is saved stored here so we're gonna create this it's a simple application not that much fundamental ideas is there but it's a very clean build and you see if whenever you are viewing you see how clean is that how sleek is that and how beautiful is that and it's fully responsive even for the small size to the lower size it's fully responsive so no need to worry about it you can just go and give it a shot if you are learning a with the next chairs because we are going to build that with the next chairs we're going to create the store using just tent we're gonna make that beautiful design using a tailwind css and for the toaster we're gonna use the react hot toast and we're gonna use the firebase and also we're gonna use that odd chairs so there is a lot of things going to be happen and we are going to uh just deal with that one by one not all together to all of that so for our references i'm gonna just go through to open that amazon 2.0 so that will be the reference website for our application of the build because i'm going to close that terminal which is running from my localhost 3000 as well as to just run my our new application here so i'm going to close that so that will be our application to just keep in the consideration so we're going to use that next year as uh, 14 the latest one till uh, of that uh, 31st of august so we're gonna go with the latest one so let's go in the documentation to see what kind of availability and how you can just go and make things done with that so from the installation you can follow through but before coming here let's go I, i'm just taking one a build clean build folder yt underscore build here i'm going to open my terminal by which i'm going to start building my face so now what is the recommendation to go with that you need to have that node.js 18.18 .18 or later so the minimum value should be 18.18 so how much i have if i go with that node v as you see i have 20.15 i think the 216 is the lts i have need to just upgrade so it's enough for that 20.15 so i have that capabilities i'm running windows even mac os or linux you can both all are supported so now here is the catch you can go with that npx create next app at latest but i'm gonna use my pnpm portion so i'm gonna skip that code if you're using the normally if you want to run that run it it will just go through to automatically redirect to the npm so what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna go with that pnpm create and i'm gonna go with that next app and by default is taking the next latest one so no need to put that latest and i'm gonna go with that amazon um amazon yt okay just to keep it that name amazon yt okay hit enter so now what it gonna ask whenever it's just going to wrap up it's gonna ask several questions here you need to just go and follow through with whatever the procedure you're gonna action 
So would you like to use TypeScript? Yes, I want to use TypeScript. I want to use that yes lint. And of course, by default, I want to that Tailwind should be set up each and everything for my application. And of course, I would love to use the source directory. So I'm going to put yes. And then, of course, the latest app router. We're not going to go with the page router. We will use that app router to create all the pages, all the API and others. No. So now, it just to give it a little bit of time to just roll to take everything in action and install all the properties the installation process is done throughout the journey install a couple of dependencies and also the dev dependencies so what i'm gonna do put an alice to see the list of things here and i'm gonna just roll back to cd into amazon yt and now if i put alice you see so many things which he created here within my application now to open that application within my uh, Visual Studio Code Editor, there is uh, several procedures there. Either you can go within that application, then from here, you can directly open it with code. Or what is uh, I love most is that to go here and put that code dots. And as you see, it's already opened within my code editor. So let's just close that terminal because I have my terminal here from my Visual Studio Code. And if you're using any other particular of code editor, then it's up to you. But I love to use that one most. So now what I'm having that in our application. So I'm going to close this. So also I'm going to keep that for my other confirmation. So let's go here. And first thing first, I'm going to run that application in my local host 3000 to run that. Let's make that PNPM dev. And after keeping that command, let's just go and start my local host 3000 to see if it's running or not while it's doing its thing. Let's just explore what I have here. I have two setup here. One is the root setup. As you see, all that git ignore, next dev, and other next config, all in the root directory here. Now I have that next for the next things. I have the node modules for keeping all the installation install package. I have that public library. Then I have my source, which I said to keep it okay. So now in the source directory, what I have, I have Fevi icon, which is the icon should be coming over here. Then I have one, the global CSS. I have my layout. I have my paste.tsx. So whatever you're going to happen to see here in the first page is coming from here. If we just come here and just remove that main and take another main tag and put some of the text should be Amazon 2.0. Okay. Should be Amazon okay hit save and after hitting save as you see amazon 2.0 is available so first thing first i'm gonna change something here one is that key remove all the default uh, properties here so to delete all and also that utility is here okay hit save now i have my clean application so first thing first i need to create this header then that also in the middle portion then the also for the bottom uh, footer so let's just start spinning and create all other properties so before creating that i'm going to change something in my tailwind config.ts so here you see that background images which i'm not going to use that and as i'm using the source i'm not using the pages so i'm going to remove that pages which is not required if you can keep it but i love to remove that and for here i'm going to add some colors here so which the colors i'm going to use in my entire build and you can prefer your own color but i'll go with that and there is for the Amazon blue, Amazon light, light text, quantity box, footer bottom, Amazon yellow, Amazon yellow dark, Amazon orange, Amazon orange dark, Amazon green, and footer background color. So these are the color I'm going to use. So you can just write those color or you can prefer your own color by which you are feeling that should be nice for you. So now after putting that colors, what else I'm going to do is that let's go in the pages so here i'm gonna get another folder here or you can call it as a directory which going to be named as components so in the components i'm gonna take is as one header here so which will be header.tsx and rafce which is that es7 react native snippet to create that easy way to make solution for that uh, creating the react components so now in the layout here i'm gonna import that one as you see everything is serving as my children i'm gonna get my header here and just hit save so let's roll back to my application here as you see header is starting spinning 
So now I need a couple of things here. I need some of the images property and that images property, I'm going to provide that asset link in the description. So you can go and uh, fetch all the assets, which I'm going to use here. So I'm going to just popping that assets here in my source. As you see in that assets, I have my advertisement flag and cart flag empty and other flag, which I'm going to use also for the banner images. I'm going to keep all the images here. So don't worry about it. All the images, it will be provided in the description the link it will be there so you can just go there and download that and just put that asset within that application it will work just fine now here in the images i also get one thing is that creating one index.ts file and what i'm doing here i'm importing the logo or i'm importing any of the icon or images from here and then export directly from here in that way i have one a clean properties by to describing the images or importing and exporting the images without any hassle so now let's scroll back in the header so in the header what we're gonna have let's just go and discuss with that first thing first you see that header what i'm gonna do create a header tag within this so now in that header, I'm going to also make uh, first thing uh, first is that um, I'm going to make another div is that and first I'm going to go with that to one. It will be our logo. OK, so there is a couple of things should be here that will be logo. Then also it should be. Uh, it should be here also for that deliver. Then it will be there for that search. And after that, we have that account then we're gonna have that you can call it as favorite and after that at the end oops at the end it's going to be happen our cart uh what's wrong with that i think okay should be favorite favorite and then it's going to be our so we're going to create this everything one by one so now first in that day put some class name width i'm going to give a full width and height i'm going to keep it as 20 and should be amazon blue that's the background color we're going to keep here as you see it just getting that color and text going to be light text and okay for right now that's enough so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take another div here. So within that div, I'm going to go and grab all other properties because this is going to wrap, this header portion going to wrap my bottom header and my the top header. So these two portions going to be eradicated all together. So as you see, that will be my top footer, uh, like a top header. And that one will be my, what you can call that, it will be my bottom header to be spanning here. And this one is that top header you can keep in separate pages you can keep it separate components it depends on you but i'll just go with in a very very simple way so now in that div first thing first i'm going to take my logo properties here so i'm going to just jump it everything within these properties okay so first is going to come the logo so in the logo it will be just a link tag from that next link then i'm going to put an image tag so the image should be imported from next image otherwise it will not work and the source is going to be provided as logo if you just roll back to my index of tsx as you see it's just logo not the index of tsx is ts only so now that's the logo and for that all tag i'm going to just provide as a logo and also for the class name i'm going to make width of 28 and object should be cover and margin top i'm gonna give one and for that link i'm gonna provide an href tag whenever anyone click on that image it will bring us back to the home so as you see that's my logo properties so first thing first i'm gonna remove that margin top right now because it will not so look perfect so why I need to keep that things, I'm going to just describe you a bit. First, I'm going to create another portion. So within that div, I have my link. Now I'm going to go and grab my delivery properties. So it will be the delivery things. So first thing first, I need to get the icons. So for this build, we're going to use that React icons to just go with that. I simply love that library. It's very simple and easy way to go. So I'm going to just cut that portion. And as I'm going to use that PNPM, I'm going to get my another terminal. And here I'm going to install that uh, library here should be PNPM install react icons. 
and for the icons there is a lot of icon you just need to search and it will just appear as you see just search the icon and it will just uh, you can just get from there you can click here and you can just copy and grab it it's very simple to use so what i'm gonna do is that i need my icon is uh, which one i'm gonna use for my location so the icon name is so no need that react portion so that's the icon i'm gonna use that location pin so let's just get this icon here hit save and we'll be able to see one icon as you see that's one icon is here but what i'm gonna do in that top layer let's just make it some room of that so that it will looks perfect so put a class them which going to be height going to be full so it will take the entire 20 height here and width will be full and i'm gonna make a max uh, like amex auto to keep in the middle and in line should be flex and item center justify between should be gap of one all together and md uh, should be gap of three and also padding x should be four it's safe and as you see they're just coming here all together for right now i'm gonna remove the justify between till now because i want to see it all together okay so now let's roll back here in that spin tag so after that i'm gonna get a div here which will combine a p tag and that one would be delivered to then another p tag should be coming here so it will say as usa okay so now as you see that the text uh, is just not uh, looking so perfect so what we need to do we need to keep that looks better so how we can do that we're going to provide some of the class name here so let's roll back here and the class name it will come in here so the class name it should be padding x should be two and we're going to give a border and the border should be transparent for first instance as you see if you come back here you will not see any border right now so it's transparent now when the border will appear so to appear the border we need to go and hover on that hover border should be mm, border should be white and the duration we're going to provide a 300 duration cursor pointer we're going to make flex item center justify center and height we're going to provide a 70 percent of height of the parent so kid save okay as you see that things we're going to create so now what i'm going to do these properties this the class name i'm going to cut it and i'm going to just go in my global global stuff css and here i'm going to go a take a layer which is going to be my components layer and from here i'm going to give a name of header uh, hadr header item and within that properties i'm going to apply those the class name which i just get from there so instead of writing all together because i'm gonna inject that header item multiple time here as you see it's also working so no other like uh, changes here it's working perfectly in both direction now okay so what i'm gonna do by default it will be hidden if we save it will disappear okay so when it will appear we're gonna appear it whenever we are putting on that like lg it will be in line flex and i'm gonna give a gap one okay done now let's go and keep that location pin to so class name text should be lg and text would be white text and for the d particularly for the class name text should be extra small as you see extra small is coming and for that p tag okay whatever it is keep it like that and for the usa text should be white and also font should be bold and i'm gonna make it as uppercase okay done so we are creating this scenario and is just perfectly fine with that okay so we have this portion here so now let's go and create that search input and that search bar because in that header we will not make it as a client component so we will just create the portion whenever we need to use the client we will just separate that portion from the parent so in a way our header will be in a set for that particularly as a server component so what i'm gonna do in that especially if you go in the search you need to type something as you see you need to click something so it need should be work as a client component because the client interactivity is there so we need to just uh, keep the separate from the server component so what i'm going to create is that as a component which is going to be uh, search input.tsx 
RFCE. So this search input component we are going to use to create that our search bar properties. So it will be search input. And of course, you need to import it. Otherwise, it will not work properly. So control space bar and import at the top. If we just come here, as you see, search input is available. So now what are all of the things going to be happen to be in that search input? First thing first, we need to have an input field, right? So instead of, we're going to keep that div and here we will keep that one input field and the type should be a text type and we're going to give a place uh, like should be a placeholder, placeholder which going to be make that uh, search Amazon products okay this is same as you see we have that our search page so now how we can arrange that one first thing first we gonna keep some class name here which going to be make a flex one so, so it will be flex one and also I'm gonna make a height of 10 and let's just make a background of red to see as you see that's just taking entire space so whatever the space is available except the other flex parameter is taking all over the spaces so okay click just remove that and now i'm gonna first it also it will be mx4 and then it will be hidden and md it will be inline flex in the medium screen it should be the item center justify between and i'm going to keep it as relative as some of the properties which going to be as an absolute here okay for the search input how i'm going to interact so put a class name uh, i'm going to give a full width i'm going to give a full height of the parent and rounded should be empty hit save as you see it's taking all over the places so from here we need to keep it like here so whatever we have been done and if you click as you see this all the functionality should be appear here okay so after this thing uh, we can make a padding x of two and the placeholder text should be a small text as them and the text should be base so the 16 pixel is there text should be black and border i'm going to keep a border of three pixel okay that's the custom border i'm going to create and border first it should be border should be transparent and whenever also i'm going to provide that outline which is available right now it should not be available and whenever i'm going to make it as focus visible so i'm focusing on that uh, input field border should be amazon orange uh not that properties so it should be focus visible border should be amazon i think we need to keep that orange it's set okay now as you see whenever we focus it's coming otherwise it just as it is so now we need to make some things that one more other properties which going to be that an span tag we need to create so it will be another span tag and here i'm going to make is hi outline search icon uh, outline search okay which need to be imported from that uh, react icons i think as you see that icon is available so that's the icon we are going to create to go and create that one put some class name over here i'm going to keep a width of 12 and the full height of the properties and bg should be amazon orange so that will be the background hover and the bg should be amazon orange of dark I'm going to put a duration of 200 and after that cursor should be pointer and text should be block and also text should be two axle if we just go here as you see we have the properties okay so but we need to keep it in a portion by which it should be appearing within the search bar but there is still some work is there should be a flex item center justify center as you see to keep it in the middle and also i'm going to make that around it round it should be top uh top right should be md and also rounded bottom right should be md so it's fully rounded now i need to keep in the middle i'm gonna make it as an absolute flag uh, oops it will be absolute and from absolute we're gonna make it right zero to keep in the fully right side as you see it's now within my this div so it's in absolute position and it's just in that lower side so now i need to keep 
one more properties is there which is that for the search query so it will be const search query should be set search query and i'm going to use that use is that hook which should be empty as first instance if i save right now as you see i'm getting an error which is happening because that uses that hook i cannot use in that uh, like the server side component as you see you're importing a component that needs use state. It only works in a client component, but uh, none of its parents are marked with use client. As the parent is not marked with uh, with the use client, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make itself as an use client properties. So only the search, it will be affected as a use client component. So now how I'm gonna react on that? What it gonna happen? So whenever we're gonna on change on that, right? Like we, we write something on that, I'm gonna take a function over here. So if we write something there, we're gonna just make that a set search query. And from there, we're gonna get that e.target.value. So the value we are writing here, we need to just keep that as within that a properties to keep that as a set search query. And the function name is should not be on click should be on change okay so now if we write something here it should be appearing as a in the like in it will save in the search query if we just inspect here in the console we're just going to make on the log which should be console.log and we're going to get the value of that search query search query okay try write something you see that value is available so now when this value is available we want to show something also we need to just get one cut button cross button by which we can cut the properties so it will be if the search query value is available means and and so what it going to be happen is that we're going to make that one md outline close button should be appearing here and for that button and whenever we're going to unclick here that's properties which we just keep that set search query should be set search query as an empty value and as we're going to make it empty we need to provide that value here which going to be the value of that search query otherwise it cannot be accessed that value if we come back here i think we will be able to see one particular icon somewhere as you see you cannot see it because we need to make it some properties here otherwise it will be lying somewhere else so how we can I'm gonna give that properties put a class name text should be Excel and text should be Amazon let's put that Amazon light okay and whenever we hope hover of that text should be rate of 600 and then uh, we're gonna make it an absolute from the right it should be a 14 and duration should be 200 and cursor should be pointer okay as you see that's appearing here but that should be appearing somewhere okay we're gonna fix that so did we miss something absolute okay right not by one four should be 14 yeah that was the problem okay uh now if we write something as you see is here we can click and that's just disappearing okay i think our search bar portion is done so whenever the effective portion is there we're going to create it once we are going to get the product so now we need to create our user properties so one will be the user and another should be the other two properties so how we can do that is so let's just go here so let's go in the header so that will be our account and for that account first we need to have one sign in button and then we need to have one sign out button because both sign in we're gonna create in the server side so we need to create its separate component we're gonna use the properties from there you can keep it here you can keep it in some other it depends on you but i love to keep it in separate uh, components so it should be sign uh, in button.tsx okay so in the sign in button we're gonna put the properties which is required because first right now we should not have one uh, user is there so it will be the sign in button okay in our application you see sign in button is appearing so let's just make some of the properties in the sign in button how it's going to be look like so in the sign in button we're gonna keep it within the form because we will make it an action here also so right now i'm gonna keep that action as an empty okay later on we're gonna fix that things so now we're gonna have a p tag should be hello and then a name in on that sign in then you're gonna have a button and that button should be account and 
list and after that we're gonna also have a span tag and here we're gonna give a uh, like cut it down icon here okay it's save and let's see what we are having right now we have uh, some of that properties which is not so looks good so in the form let's put some give some class name should be text uh, text should be extra small text should be gray of 100 and uh, I'm gonna make it a flex flex should be an column justify center and padding X should be two should be on a border and remember the properties we are uh, keeping beforehand so instead of giving that let's just try some of this from here in that uh, I think we have in the global store CSS header item let's see what is uh, actually providing for me if I just go and keep it there so if we go in my properties here in that global CSS so we have the padding access we have yeah we have other properties so no need to provide this portion hit save and let's see okay uh, that looks so nice not not bad but uh, I think uh, what else we are missing in the globals we have flex item center justify center we should not keep that item center so what I'm gonna do is that in here should be item uh, item should be item start okay I think we are cool okay so the other properties it will work as you see the similarly we have been done before so in that p tag it should be like the way it is so in that button uh, the text uh, should be white and font should be bold and flex item center hit save okay as you see okay quite fine and i think we are good to go on that so now we need to provide this other two parameter so let's roll back the header again so we need to have one fabric button and also we need to have one car icon so both icon will be using as a client side property because as you see we need to show one value here we will access that value using uh, from our store and whenever we're gonna uh, access the data from the store we need to use some of the client set library Either you use the Redux Toolkit or the Justins in both segment, both segment, which will not be provide in a server side uh, facilities. So we need to go and create those properties. So first thing first again, what I love is that creating a separate components here. Okay, uh, oops, it's just uh, I'm gonna close others from here, and here I'm gonna open a new file, which are going to be happen to a fabric button .tsx. And here I'm gonna define whatever the properties going to be appear. So in the favorite, it should be my favorite button. It's set. So now in the favorite button, what it will be there? So it's just going to be simply a link, and the H wrap should be okay. I need to import that first, and the H wrap should be providing on that favorite screen. And first thing first again here should be one p tag which going to be marked and then another p tag which going to be and and favorite hit save let's see what we're having here so we have marked and favorite so let's go in the link parameter and we're gonna put that uh, which going to be let's put a class name one of that header item okay looks not so good but we're gonna provide some other properties so the text should be extra small and also the text I'm gonna put a gray of 100 and by default going to be hidden LG should be in line of flex and flex should be column and should be justify center okay I'm gonna just save that let's see what we have uh, okay Justify center and remember item should be start otherwise it will messing around so now we are having this mass properties so what you need to do is to create these properties so item and favorite so also for that p tag here for the class name should be uh, we need to make the text should be white and font should be bold okay so now we're getting that so in that p tag also I'm gonna make it as relative and why I'm gonna make it as relative uh, should be 
relative because we have on absolute properties by which we're gonna generate the item uh, uh, the, the item over there so the span tag put a class name i'm gonna make it an absolute if we just make it as zero as you see the zero is underneath the down so i'm gonna make it an absolute from right should be two and from top should be two okay and we will be four height will be a four i'm going to put a border which going to be one pixel and should be border gray of 400 and then i'm going to make that the properties of header item here uh not the header item i think header item also serving the purpose but i'm going to make a padding x of zero okay cool i think that's the scenario is just coming up with that scenario okay so now you also make that text should be extra small and text should be amazon uh, amazon orange dark and font should be medium rounded should be md it's safe so now as you see around it uh, not md it should be more round so it will be asm should be looks good as you see we have that properties here okay that's the simple and smartest the way it should be like the other one so now we are going to have one more button here which going to be happen to be called as a cart button it will be cart button.tsx okay so now in the header after that favorite button we're gonna get our art button and also i need to import that button because all the parameter i'm importing in the top if it's not imported it will not work maybe you're gonna just looking for something else or some of the problem but the problem it will come over here so now that my card button will be there and similar way it should be a link properties here for the card button and h wrap should be uh h wrap should be taking us to our card and for the same smarter situation we're gonna generate so in the fabric whatever we did i'm gonna just copy that and i'm gonna paste it here that's it i think it will serve the purpose so the card button is available and let's just see how it's working or even is because i think the flex item center and justify center and i think these two properties which will uh, not require and also the flex column properties it will not be required here so let's just go in the global uh, global store css either we make it flex no yeah oh we made it flex so we can use simply that header header item here okay i think yeah i think that will be okay with that it's safe okay so in the card uh, okay yeah that's working so now except that card we're gonna have that one image properties here which coming from that next image and on the source properties it should be that card icon and also for the alt tag should be card icon and for the class name which should be auto height should be eight and object should be cover so you're gonna have to see one icon here okay that looks good then after that image immediate image you're gonna have a p tag and which going to say us as a card and the class name should be text should be extra small and text should be white and also font should be bold and a margin top should be three it's safe okay as you see we have our card so now the similar parameter which we need to generate is that remember in the fabric we are having that but it will be a different i think it's the same uh yeah not the same but it's different so we're gonna just create a separate button for it or separate a span for it the value should be zero so put a class name we're gonna make it is uh absolute okay and also the text should be amazon orange call it uh and dark portion and for the text should be sm a small text for the top it should be two uh oops it will be top two okay and from the left i'm gonna provide a customized 29 pixel which looks it's going to make it in a same in that center portion and font should be semi bold okay as you see that looks perfect and reliable if we just go and roll back for this smaller skin okay not quite bad 
that's <laughs> it's just ensuring that it's working perfectly okay so right now let's roll back to our header again i think these other properties we can just uh, remove that comments as we are having our things to be done okay okay so now what we need to do is that to create some of that interesting portion is there i think we will make it sticky but not right now whenever we are needing that one that time you're gonna create that now we are having that our header top now we need to generate our header bottom properties how we can do it in the components we're gonna create that header bottom dot tsx okay so in that header remember after in this portion we're gonna create that header bottom it's save so now we are having header bottom so that will be injecting over here in the header bottom what it will be appearing here is that first thing first it should be uh, coming under a deep properties and first it will be one p tag which giving us one menu icon is there which going to be named as all so that's the menu item going to be appearing then later the other properties okay so we are here and i think if we save we should be seeing some property value did we import that one yeah okay that's cool so now in the top layer of the div put a class name uh, bg should be amazon light and text should be white and we're going to provide the 80 percent of the opacity as you see that's the parameter so also here i'm going to put a class name should be flex item center space x should be three and padding y should be one and padding lip should be six and text should be extra small okay that's the properties now for the p tag put a class name which are going to be a flex item center so right now we can see it but what i'm gonna do is that to generate one more globe like one more properties in the globals.css which uh not the globals yeah globals.css which going to be amplify my class name here so it will be a link property the border should be border wide of 10 percent hover border amazon yellow dark and text also the cursor pointer so that's going to be providing me this effect here so let's roll back to my header bottom so in the header bottom okay where is that yeah it's here so in the header bottom i'm going to provide that link okay once i put that's put that link class name as you see that kind of looks the similar which we can just go on that also for that menu icon put a class name text should be lg margin right should be one okay cool so now with the same thing with the same parameter i need to just generate like separate some of that p tag which going to be a today's deals will be customer service will be registry gift card sell so these three should be always be visible this other three it will only be visible whenever it's coming in land flex how is that if you just go over here just make it uh not that one oops i just take the wrong one okay if i just make that one small as you see that tree is appearing others it just uh removing on the height so let's just make it bigger and hit save go in our first parameter okay that's cool so one more uh, two more parameters going to be coming here one will be the login button and another one be this one so we're gonna generate that but first i'm gonna just keep that as simple as it is so after that p tag one should be appearing like this which going to be say please sign in to access your card so that's the te parameter text should be appearing here later on whenever we create the session we're gonna display it alongside with the session so now as we are having our header let's just go and create our banner here so the banner portion then we can actually see the changes within our application and to create the banner what we're gonna use you can just go and search which should be ambler carousel react so that one we're gonna use that to create this beautiful amazing scenario by which we're gonna create that first thing first i need to install that so i'm gonna copy this portion and here i'm gonna make that pnpm okay 
so this is the portion we are going to use and after installing that we need to follow through or uh, making through separate properties that's the uh, of the class name which we need to generate and keep it in simple way in our uh, that uh, tailwind.config. Uh, like ts file so there need to be accommodated some of the properties so we're gonna do it one by one first thing first as we install here they just go and create one more file which going to be named as a uh, carousel banner.tsx okay so the carousel banner and that banner going to be imported in the page so that will be the first instance scenario here so in this portion we're gonna keep that so after that main parameter i'm gonna just import that carousel banner so that banner going to be stay here so as you see carousel banner is available so how we gonna just render or uh, keep that banner thing so to create that banner first thing first we need to create one image properties or as you say we can just go through and create first we need to make it as use client as we're gonna use that properties uh, from uh, that uh, umbrella so otherwise it will just uh, break his entire things so let's just go and start with that okay and also i need to change one more thing is that if we roll back in the page what i'm gonna do is that as you see that's the properties so here what i will do is that in the top layer i'm gonna make that export const metadata and the type should be metadata and we need to import it from next is equal to should be the title which we will provide that home home and it will be amazon 2.0 it's save and after saving i think it will change just uh it will just i think yeah as you see home 2.0 and for that uh, fabi icon i'm gonna grab my fabi icon from my previous project okay so that's the fabi icon so it will replace with that as you see now i have my amazon fabi icon okay so resolve back to my carousel banner so here i'm gonna generate one uh, banner property so it should be name as that called on that banner images so banner images and in that banner images which going to be happen to be an array and within that array we're going to provide some of the parameters we're going to provide the title and we're going to just import the images for that banner images from the asset so let's just import that okay the title is the banner one and banner two three four five and we have five images to run entirely within our banner properties and now here as we are having one div we need to also create one reference to accommodate that one so it should be const and it will be providing and for the auto play auto play we need to also import one more uh libraries there which is ambella carousel auto play so it should be pnpmi ambella carousel auto play even you just come back here and if you search here how to auto play and other properties you can just read the documentation here and gonna have a very good understanding how each and everything work so now restore back here okay should be const and within that parameter we're gonna make that umbrella reference umbrella ref and that reference should be use umbrella i think that one uh, will be coming directly from that umbrella carousel okay let's import in the top okay should be this one so it will be umbrella carousel okay and here we're gonna also make a loop which should be true and also the duration should be 100 and also we're gonna inject that autoplay and to get that autoplay we need to also go with that autoplay properties in the global way so should be okay let me get that okay so i need to import that autoplay properties uh, i think it's not giving us no it's still not i think i just need to grab it manually so the autoplay need to be umbla carousel autoplay and the delay should be eight 
like 8000 means 8 millisecond so within the 8 millisecond the image is uh, going to be changed one by one and also that uh, on that particular portion I'm going to just define that the autoplay should be uh, coming from here from that function it gonna entertain so now for here this portion what we gonna do we're gonna just provide a div and with the div we're gonna get that banner images and we're gonna map through it okay so we will first take one item and in the item we're gonna return that particularly one of that image here which going to be imported from next image and in that image the key should be item dot uh, title and for that src the source should be item dot source so means the item dot image i'm going to be get there and for the alt tag should be we will make that item dot title okay okay now if we just hit the save for right now let's see what's going to be appearing here you see we are having image and we are all the images just stack uh, one by one and now we need to keep the references how it's going to be appearing and for the weight we're going to provide 1920 or the full ratio and the height should be 1080 so that will be within the full ratio image parameter and now for that div, we need to now put with the reference parameter with a class name we will make that as a overflow should be hidden cursor should be pointer that's not yeah uh, i think it's okay because we can slide on that i'm gonna make it a relative z index should be zero and for the reference uh, oops it should be the reference and we're gonna provide that ambler reference here and as soon as we did that uh, any changes is here no no changes we will make a reload here if we can see any changes is appearing no nothing uh, I think so no okay we need to make some changes mm, first thing first uh, okay in that deep properties put a class name we need to grip that flex properties here and remember what i told you before we need to go in the tailwind config.ts and in the extend over here we need to create a, a properties uh, name as flex within that properties we need to provide that <coughs> full state properties should be it will be zero and then zero then 100 percent and hit save and also when you come here hit save to get that flex properties here as you see our image is here and is looking perfect so now what we can do is also let's roll back to our header in the top so i'm gonna do is that put a class name sticky top zero z50 okay let's see as you see is already sticky portion and i think if you just hit a reload here okay there is something as you see it's not uh i think if we roll back to our previous we are missing something so let's just go and see the properties if we provide in a perfect way zero zero one hundred person in the carousel banner okay mm, i think so it's uh should working properly uh, 1920 is the weight what if we provide that auto weight let's see uh, not the auto weight so I'm gonna just comment that weight so it's gonna get the default weight okay I think yeah that looks fine because 1920 is uh, it's not getting that full uh, assumption also you can adjust though is that put a class name weight you can provide the full width and the height it will just get the default height so now as you see within that properties here there is some dark shadow is here which is not appearing here you see that's the full image properties so to indicate or get that dark shadow properties what i'm gonna do after that particular div i'm gonna take one more div which is going to be self-closing div and here i'm gonna just go and grab some of the class name by which going to be defined how it going to be look like remember we provided that one as a relative portion right so that will be an absolute from top zero left zero so it will be in the bottom and also it's uh, giving an insert color properties as you see it's just here you see how deep is that it's just in the bottom so that we can just roll back to our product in the top layer so it's just uh, look a little bit of cool 
okay so within that portion we are having done our banner so now one more properties need to be appearing is that called our footer.tsx okay rfce so after finishing that footer we can just go and grab other properties because that will be the backbone of our application so after having that tree we can just go and grab other properties the footer also it will be appear in the layout portion okay so you can see the footer should be appearing here okay you see the footer now before going to just grab that footer we need to also combine some of the properties to uh, create the container section and also for to grab other scenario here so how we can do that first thing first we're gonna go in the components and here we're gonna take one more file which will be container c-o-n-t-a-i n-e-r container.tsx and within that container we're going to define our max width properties right so in that way we can use that properties as you see in that portion we have is coming with a because in the header is both width without that it will take the full weight but in that product layer is getting a maximum weight also in that for that layer also having a maximum weight okay it will be here so let's go here should be the we're gonna render that children here and also you're gonna get that class name here and first thing first is start giving the type so it will be uh, interface should be props and that props children should be react dot react note and also for the class name if it's available uh, should be should be a string okay and within these properties it should be as props so now here first thing first we're gonna just put the children so whatever in between it will just render and also we will use the tailwind march to combine the class name proportion a proportion so it will be pnpmi tailwind march so here we're gonna define whatever the properties we want to define and we're gonna combine it uh, i think we made a mistake here should be okay march so here first we're going to provide the class name we want to provide should be max width of max width of a screen axle should be mx auto and p padding x should be 4 lg padding x should be zero that will be the our first properties and how it will work if we roll back to the footer so this will be our footer and here we're going to provide one div here so instead of that div we're going to just roll back to that uh, container and put a p tag hello just to see how it's going to work as you see that hello is coming on that properties if we go in that our container and put that like py of thin as you see how easily it just taking that property so that's the thing which we are going to create also now we need to combine that properties with the class name which we are going to generate so i'm going to cut that portion then I'm gonna put a second bracket so it will be TW merge we're gonna provide from the Tailwind merge not that one should be TW merge and first we're gonna provide the class name which you want to provide then the class name which going to coming up from the parent so if we come over here in the footer let's put a class name put a BG of uh, like what you can call that and let's just put a rate of 200 just to see as you see we are getting that red background so in that way within uh, the combination we can provide this class name too so in the footer layer because in the container it will be the footer of this portion so that will be here then we're gonna have one footer in the bottom portion so over in the footer put a class name the it should be bg should be footer bg and also text should be light text if we go here as you see looks perfect and in the class name i'm gonna make it a padding y of 10 just to be in a proper way i'm gonna make a grid and grid call should be one md grid call should be two and for lg grid call should be four and gap should be a five okay 
So now we're going to have a four separate segment. So this segment would be this one. So to inject this segment, we're going to have some of that data properties. Okay. So let's roll back to our in that components folder. We will just close everything in the source. I'm going to take one more folder. So it will be that constants. So whatever the constant data we are going to provide, we're going to keep it here. So it will be index.ts. And here I'm going to export some of the properties called name as the footer data. Okay, so this data will be represent all of my footer section. So what we are creating just you can just see and visualize it will just make a sense here. So over here in the footer data, we are providing four objects. Okay, so that's the four object four items one, two, three, four, and one individual item having one ID, so a different ID, then we are having a title, the title we are discussing here. Then each and every properties, we have a list item, the array of list item, which having an ID, then we have that list data, the data we are just showcasing here. So that's the data we are having here. So if you see, that's our first first properties first object that's our second object with the same properties then we have our third object same properties but a different title and different parameter then we have our fourth object with different id different title and different parameter of objects okay so how cool it will be if we just do in that way it will make a sense here so here in that container what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make that uh should be footer data and then i'm gonna make a map here dot map we're going to take it as an item and what we're going to return here we're going to make a list container here okay so it will be we'll just uh make it in a separate portion here should be called footer middle list dot tsx okay save so that will be here and here we're going to call it footer middle okay so let's scroll back to our footer here if we just come our application here as you see we have the footer middle list is all are coming here so how we can accommodate that first put a key item dot oops it will be let's just roll back should be item dot id and then we're gonna make the title oops should be title and we're gonna provide that item dot title and then we're going to have that list item which going to provide that item dot list item so these three properties we're gonna go and grab here within that footer middle how we can grab that first thing first it should be our title and then it should be a list item and now you can define the type here if you just make that interface props and the title it should be coming as a string and for that list item, I'm going to put it any. You just go and grab that because it will be an array of a string. You can just go and provide that. Uh, sorry, it should be the props. Okay. So in that particular div, we're going to provide one h3 tag, which is going to be get our title. So let's just click as title. And if we just come here and you see the title is changed. So now how we can accommodate that? Put a class name, font should be... I'm going to make it a font of that semi bold and then text should be uh text should be white also the text make it as a base text and b should be three margin bottom as you see looks cool and it will be the similar on that okay so now we are having that so after that we're going to put an order list item and order list and here we're going to make that list item dot map and here we're going to make item again i'm going to go with any i don't want to having any problem here you can just go and define the type it's just simple type here you can uh, figure it out and i'm going to generate one list item here i'm going to grab that let's call I think so there will be a two separate parameter because each list item having a separate data parameter so that will be here after that uh, item dot should be list I think the list data should be appearing and that should be with map so the data which going to be string and here I need to provide that 
li which going to generate our data so it's uh, we are mapping within the two parameter because as you see if we go in the constant here we are having one list data so it's the list item which having id then the list data first we're mapping through here then we are mapping within that list data okay so now in that ul let's put a class name i'm going to make a flex flex should be in column and the gap should be uh 0 0.5 okay and here also I'm going to keep that in the similar parameter and for that list item with a class name and here i'm gonna um, go and grab one of the class name for which going to be responsible to create that which i'm gonna keep also in that globals.css so in the app should be in globals.css which going to be called as a footer link which whenever you're gonna hover it will be underlined text sm hover text should be gray 100 cursor pointer margin bottom to duration 150 so this here the class name should be footer link it's safe and after hitting save uh okay still not reloading anything here okay let's see I think did we uh, give oh, okay I need to save the global stuff CSS file otherwise it will not work okay as you see now you can feel the similar flexibility we created here and if we just make any smaller bits you see that's working perfectly fine so now one more properties is there to create that a uh, bottom properties so that's the footer so that's the container here after that container we're gonna create some of that other properties which are going to be generating the properties links so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just popping up those uh parameter here because that's nothing no fundamental other properties or reasoning here it's just a simple class name and utilities here what i did giving a footer bottom and giving a padding y and ha within that ul an order list i'm having three properties conditions of use privacy notice and your ads privacy choices and then putting in uh like just to amazon inc for or that affiliates so now if you go here you will be able to see this portion so feel free to create that you can design it the way you like you can create it the way you like so now the main part which we need to work is to bring the products okay that's the one of the most fundamental parties here which you're going to be having to take an action how we can do that first from where we're gonna grab that products we're gonna make that from the dummy json and we're gonna use this website it's pretty much having everything you need if you go in the docs and if you just roll back to the product section and if we go in that get us all products here if we just go this particular like url it's okay also i think the string also copied hit enter you can see all the products is here also you can uh, put the limit here you can put all other properties you can make the fascination the way you like by default is 30 products is coming also if you put the two you see the single product also appearing so this is one of the best one to create those parameters and grab the products which i really like so i'll go in my page here on that segment here i'm gonna make one uh, call like one of the function here which is going to be named as the fetch data so in the top layer on this parameter i'm going to make that const page data or i can go with that export export const page data so it will be an assign function okay now i need to create a response const response should be await and here i'm gonna give the fetch parameter should be fetch parameter and i will provide the link which i'm gonna follow through and within that link parameter what i'm gonna do is that uh, i'm gonna make that headers or i'm gonna get that method the method i'm gonna follow which going to be a by default i'm gonna it's a get method so i'm gonna provide also the get method the headers in that headers i'm going to provide the parameter which we're going to follow through the content type and others so it will be content type should be application.json and now i if i do everything right i should be able to fetch or get the response back so what i'm going to do i'm going to make that const data should be await response.json and from here i'm going to return that particularly that data 
So whenever I'm going to call that fetch data function, I should be able to grab that data altogether. And how I can check that, let's just do it here, should be const products, uh, PRO, do you say, okay, const product should be await. As I'm making it await, I should be make it as a async function. So it will be await. And I'm going to make that fetch data here. It's a and also I'm going to provide a log to see my products list so whenever if I'm able to fetch the data I should be able to see here as I my still all the my thing is except the search and other parameter is, is rendering on the server side as you see now I can see the products so in the products layer that should be products into products so that's the particular layer so if I just go here and just put within the object i should be get back the particularly only the product so without any further uh like uh hassle i can just grab that product so nine eight seven i want to just go in one to see whatever i'm saying if i get that or not okay you see i'm just getting that particular product array so now that function the one we created in the top we can just roll back and take it in the root somewhere else so because whenever I can call I need to just provide that input and some other properties so I'm gonna make a leave function the library and here I'm gonna put it as one index.ts I'm gonna make it here so this function going to get one in point by default so in point which would be a string string so now here i need to provide that string and every time it will render me or give me back the products so let's roll back here and i'm going to make that const in point should be the in point which i'm going to be providing here uh okay so i think it's just didn't copy it properly so i'm going to copy it from here and make it here and i'm going to pass that in point and also I need to import that fetch data now from my library <laughs> okay if I do that I should be able to have my products now where I can actually keep the product so I'm gonna keep a folder a new uh, directory here should be call it as product list so product list dot tsx rafce so i'm going to combine that product list here so that product will be available whenever my first page is rendered so after that carousel i'm going to take a div here so within that div i'm going to grab that product list oops it should be product list component it's safe so if i go in my application you see the product list is appearing so let's just make in the day put a class name margin to, uh, top should be 10 md margin top minus should be 20 and lg minus margin top should be 60 should be flex item center justify center padding bottom should be 10. so that's the initial setup for that particular thing uh, okay, uh, I should not uh, doing that right now. So the padding bottom uh, case should be keeping that way. And also for right now, I think it will not be good to keep that right now because it will make you confused what uh, why I did that. So first I'm going to keep that product list property. And in that product list property, I need to provide that particular setup. So in the product list, I'm gonna send that products so it should be products and I'm gonna send my products here so if I go in my product list I can now get my products and also if I just keep a log here I'll be able to see my products as you see it's in the bottom so now there is a type definition we need to declare here as we are delving from here we need to provide a type here otherwise it will just start giving me some of the error so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna define a product type here so to doing the product type also in that lib i'm gonna take one more file which will be type.ts and here i'm gonna get my grab my all of the types which are going to be implemented over all the project so first thing first let's just see what will be the product type 
if you just scroll back here and you can just view the response for the product as you see we have id title description category price discounted percentage so there is a lot of properties here so that's the properties we're going to handle in the type definition so first thing first as you see in that product type particularly we are dividing that available status string band string category string description string dimension the dimension properties and we are defining at the top meta defining here review defining here and then id number images string area of a string meta which we define here the meta tag and after that also the review same we define in the top other property it just simple parameters of and the quantity should be if available right now we don't have any quantity i'm gonna explore it later on why we keep the quantity so you will understand in a better way so that's the properties and also we have session extension here to give the session properties here so now if we come back here we need to provide that interface so interface i'm going to provide the props in the props it should be products and within the products it should be that uh, what we can call that or i think uh, it should not no need to wrap it here so the products it should be defining here as the type of products product and it will be an array of products so also over here i'm going to define as uh, not the product but the uh, props okay as we did that you see everything is gone if we just click here uh, like if we just want to see particular uh, prop uh, properties from here if we just make that products.map item if we make that item.id you see now we can see each and everything properly we have id we can access all the properties if we make the title we can view all the title properties so within that way we can just generate each and every segment each and every property so now we have our product now how we can uh, view that product or show the product in between so we can also generate one more component here which will be named as product uh, product guard.tsx okay so in the product card we will just define all the product parameter okay so here we're gonna define it as a container container okay in the container we're gonna map through it so it will be like products dot map item uh, oops it will be the first bracket and here we're gonna make it as a product card okay product card and first thing first we're going to define as the key should be item.id <clears throat> and we're going to pass that product which will be as the entire item will be provided there if we come back here as you see we have our product so in the container let's put some design here grid grid calls should be one and m like uh sm grid calls should be two and lg like for the md grid call should be three and for the LG, grid call should be 4. And I'm going to provide a gap of 5. Hit save. And after saving it, as you see, we are having a justify grid pattern here. So now it's our time to combine all other the properties to create or generate particular segment here. So over here, we can just simply get the product. And also in the product, we can just define the type, which uh, should be the product should be the type of product uh okay uh, what we pro do you city okay that's the product and here that will be the product that will be the product okay done so for the card let's just define some of the class name which is going to be border border gray of 200 and i'm gonna make it rounded for md bj should be white overflow should be it will be overflow should be hidden okay uh did i running any console no okay good so that's my properties here so after that i'm gonna grab the image here so let's just grab another div and here i'm gonna generate a link parameter so first i'm not gonna keep the link just keep it simple later on once we are going to provide the link i'm gonna popping up that on here so first i'm gonna grab one image and the source property it should be product dot images and as an array of images we're going to provide the first image the first uh, index should be there it should be product 
image and also we're gonna provide the width of 600 and height should be 600 hit save and after hitting save we're gonna encounter one problem here as you see we need to just define that within the cdn properties in that uh, next config.mjs we need to define the parameter in which uh like in uh, from which domain it going to uh, get that one so it will be uh, from here I'm going to grab uh, like uh, two parameters. One should be for my images, which going to be coming from that dummy JSON, and another for my uh, host images, which going to be coming from that google.com, which is the Google uh, that user, user content.com. So now from this two particular domain, I'm going to fetch the images. That should be my pattern. You just hit reload with that. And it will just take a bit of time if it's taking more time than close the terminal and then or you can just close it and make that pnpm dev to rerun the again to just uh, go out of any of the problem so start the localhost again as you see it's compiling so it's better whenever you are changing in the next .config.mjs file or js file you need to go with that okay okay i think everything cool if we go back here as you see that images is actually taking a bit of time because 34x is appearing sometimes it depends on the network or bandwidth so just give it a space of time it will just coming here properly so don't worry about it so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make it more flexible here so I'm going to make it a parity so it's going to reload at the first instances put a class name or i'm going to make it also a loading lazy not with the priority should be loading lazy so it will just uh, reload on on the center and if we have that carousel banner so here i'm going to define it for that as parity okay so now let's go back here put a class name in that class name uh, i'm going to make it a width of full so first thing first on that particular div for a class name should be i'm going to make it as a relative i'm also going to make it as a group overflow should be hidden height should be 72. so now here as width is full height going to be full object should be contained and i'm going to provide a background color a custom background color to make it a bit uh, nicer f8 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 you can put it uh, just keep it in that also tell win config.ts file depends on you so whenever i'm going to make it in a group on and we're going to just hover on the group i'm going to make it a scale of 110 and i'm going to make it a duration of 200 it's safe still uh, i think yeah it's coming here okay just uh gonna take a bit of time don't worry about it again i'm saying that so it's a lot of uh, clear images so that's the way it's taking a bit of time okay if we hover through it as you see okay it's cool it's giving me the things which i'm looking for so now let's roll back to our in the first on the page instances here uh, remember where we are going to start creating something so the margin top should be i think we already typed beforehand so we can just go and grab those property here okay so what I'm going to do is that to jump it on the top layer, as you see, that's the portion. If we just go back here, yeah, that's the, we're going to make it in the top layer. That's it. So I'm going to make a reload here to take that. Yeah, so you see, that just jump and now it's not wrapping all together. I'm having my properties, I'm having my content, so it looks nicer. So now let's just need to ramp up other properties here to keep that instances. So in that product card, I'm going to create some other properties which are going to be uh, predefined and go and create all the scenario. So after the image, we should have to be get that icon. See the two icon is here. So on that same particular div, I'm going to just generate uh, or create one more component which is going to be see as product icon. dot tsx okay so on here i'm going to close this not recur anymore okay so here i'm going to grab that product icon parameter uh product icon and in the product icon i'm going to send two of the things one of the thing is that i'm going to just uh 
past the product okay or we need to what we are going to use because as you see uh whenever we're gonna go and circulate that we should be able to um, we should be able to yeah we need that entire product we require because as you see if we just go and just check on that because why we are just keeping in the different page as you see we need to click it will be clickable so we need to make it use client and we need to send that one to our uh like in our store so that's why you need to create that particular segment so that's why we need that entire product to be sent from here so now let's go in the product icon so this is nowhere here so we should be able to see that one so that's the product i think we make it relative yes uh no we didn't make it relative yet so it will not work properly so or we made it yeah we made it <laughs> okay okay i do smile okay now in the product uh in the product icon also we have in the product so in the product it should be product of product, the type now here what we're gonna do is that in that particular deep layer first i'm gonna make that a p tag which is going to be uh, defining that product dot discounted percentage should be go and grab the percentage of the product which we are giving in that particular segment okay still we why we can't see because our entire image property is taking that entire uh, space remember so in that product card the properties of 72 if we just remove that image make it commented we should be able to see that scenario we just make reload okay you see we have that so now if we keep the image so the image is taking the entire property so now what we're gonna do is that in the product icon uh we're gonna put a class name we're gonna make it as absolute from the top should be two from the right should be two and it should be flex item center gap should be two hit save and we should see something as you see we are having something here not ring should be r-i-g-h-t right okay now that's the portion is getting visible so now for that particular p tag put a class name should be a bg should be transparent and text should be amazon blue okay and border we're gonna make a border of also amazon blue and whenever we're gonna make it a group on hover bg should be amazon blue and group we're gonna make it hover on the group text should be uh, white okay and the duration property should be 200 and i'm gonna make it takes should be extra small should be rounded full padding y should be one padding x should be two it's safe as you see we are having that whenever we are hovering it just changes the similar parameter which we created before so now after that p tag we're gonna take an span tag here where we're gonna put that md uh favorite border one it will be border one will it will be the favorite so the both it will be different because once we click as a favorite it should be different icon so that's the one we need to create so right now let's put here is that text uh should be class name text should be excel and i'm gonna make it a z of 40 otherwise whenever we click here the click should be take effect on that so we need to give a more z index for it so that's the product card portion which going to be wrap up with the link later on so now after having that particular product card so this portion we need to provide the details portion here so that will be the details portion so in the details i'm gonna get take another div and h2 tag which going to uh, like generate my our product dot title if we hit save button and we're gonna see our product title is available right now and in the product title okay so for that uh, title let's just put a class name over here should be line club of one so whatever the title i'm going to provide here should be in within the one line and also for that particular div here on the top let's put a class name and for this one i'm gonna make a padding y of two and padding x should be a four just let's see 
okay looks cool and later on i'm gonna keep also uh there is should be some of the properties make the flex flex call because the button appear should be appearing here and then the justif uh, i'm gonna give a gap of two and justify should be between so later on we're gonna implement that because what i'm gonna do is that after this portion it will be a button here which is going to be at two part so that button going to appear this is the one we are going to include also here so now in that div after that uh title we're gonna provide a p tag also which is going to be that product dot description okay as you see it's a, a very <laughs> uh, i think too much description here and also i'm gonna make it as a font should be uh, semi bold just to be aligned to keep emphasizing here and for this one put a class name and the text should be small text text should be amazon blue and i'm going to give it a opacity of 90 percent and the line clamp should be three so the maximum three lines should be available here okay done so after that p tag let's now we need to provide the price here as you see the price categories need to be provide so for that price how we can uh, implement in a, in a very good manner so first thing first we can just put a p tag and then we're gonna make that with product dot price as you see as soon as i did that i'm having that product price but it's not with the actual reasoning uh, and why is that because uh, which price we are entertaining is is a uh, us dollar or any of the local price we are putting so within that to be implemented with that i'm gonna make it a component which uh, should be price format.tsx now here i'm gonna define that a pricing format how it gonna indicate so first thing first instead of this p tag i'm gonna make that price formats and here i'm gonna pass that amount amount which is going to be a product dot price so in that price format we're gonna just generate that scenario so it should be that amount and also we're gonna get that as class name also available should be there so to giving uh, some particular that proportion here we can just go with that simple props now instead of the deep we can take a span tag so here we're going to define whatever the properties we're going to put that if we just go and put that amount we can just simply get back our amount here the price which we are having there if we you want to put that some dollar sign you can uh, provide here it will just return that same scenario but we are not going to implement that one right like that the so first we're going to make is a four method amount which going to be as an amount for the new and we're going to grab that number from the javascript and we're going to grab that amount from there and it will be two local string and within that we're going to provide that uh, english and should be the us so the us dollar categories we're going to combine and also we need to define what kind of criteria it will be there so style should be currency and the currency should be usd and then the minimum factor uh, fraction of digits going to be two okay so now instead of that amount we're going to provide that formatted amount here uh, oops it should be formatted amount so now as you see we're having this amount is implemented so for the class name for the class name we're gonna make that tw march here available so in that available march we're gonna make that uh font should be medium and here we're gonna pass that our class name whichever we are preferring to pass it here so that's one also it's going to be grab here as you see or instead of medium we can just provide that as semi bold bold to look it uh much much nicer so now we have that portion here so within that criteria we can just provide all of the properties here so now after the price format we're going to have another p tag which going to provide the category and in the category on this pen tag we will generate that product dot category if we hit the save we should be able to see the category button here so let's just put a class name tag should be a small text 
and for the span tag put the class name font should be semi bold hit save and we are having our criteria here so that's particular div put a class name make it a flex flex should be in column we're going to provide a gap of one and also you're going to generate the height of 36 to just go and fall back to provide other ratio so now for the add to card we're going to generate one button here create a button should be add to card dot add to card button dot tsx because uh what we are going to generate is that first it's going to provide this button once so we're having add to card we can having that functionality and we're going to use that button all over our product all over our project so we can initialize that button first time at a time at the first glimpse but we can use it every time whenever we need it so how we can implement that one let's just roll back to our button here so instead of this button we're gonna make that add to cart button and also the similar we're gonna pass the product here also okay so the product it will be just align there so first thing first in that uh, properties here remember we should have a two separate segment which going to be product and also which going to be class name so let's just define the product and other properties so it will be uh, interface props and for the product should be product and for the class name if it's available should be string so in the props properties it will go as props okay so now what kind of button are you gonna render a simple button it should be available instead of the div we're gonna generate a button here which it will say add to cart the simple text it's going to render and how the scenario we are going to eradicate here now we need that button the condition rendering it will be available so put a class name and it will be tw merge and here first we're going to define the class name we want to provide and then whenever we are going to having our class name we can also provide that class name i'm gonna i think we have uh, okay i i need to maybe i miss something here yes I need to provide that now what kind of design we have been preparing for that text is small text tracking wide font medium margin bottom to giving a border which the border color we are refactoring pairing wise too and now rounded full amazon that the background color is amazon light of 10 percent of upper city and hover pg margin yellow dark and duration 200 so whenever the this class name is the default whenever you want to put the class name that will effective from here so if we go back here as you see that's the functionality we have been done so now we need to create another properties which should be a react hot toast hot toast so we will use that toast to show our toast properties here to implement that let's go in the documentation we need to install that one within our project so let's install first should be okay pnpm install react hot toast so now what i'm gonna do for that toaster here as you see that's the properties which i'm gonna copy it and instead without keeping here i'm gonna keep it within that layout so after finishing that body i'm gonna inject that one here so if we go and okay still installing so i'm gonna just define what is not requiring so removing this portion and also going to removing this portion okay not require and this one should be background should be black and color should be white okay still installing so we can grab that right now from react hot toast and instead of top center we're gonna make that as bottom right so it's the bottom in the below section so no need this one and also i'm not gonna use i'm gonna just use the default parameter okay it's same so now if we go in the product card so let's go in the add to card button whenever i'm gonna click on that on click i'm gonna just define something should be toast dot success uh toast dot success add it successfully just to show that so once we 
make that on click functionality here as you see if we go here in our application it's have the client side properties so now if that button is stay within our product curves like if we're keeping that button here we need to make this entire application as use client but as is the button is the separate segment we can just handling with that as creating as use client so that's as simple as it is so everything in our product is the server side only the button is the client side as you see that looks very slight so that's the proportion which you need to work on it so whenever you are creating any application you need to go and follow through it so as you see now we are having our properties and it's working perfectly fine so if you look back here in our phone page whatever the things we really needed we have been done also we need to go and create the search functionality right so what i'm gonna do that's within this first video this is i think enough for to go on so it will come in part by part so in our second video which is going to be coming uh, like i'm gonna go in a part by part segment it will be like amazon 2.0 then it will be like the phone page setup then it will come with that state setup which we're gonna use that our just end and then also it's gonna come in with the user setup by which we're gonna create the user using the auth js and then we're gonna coming up with the payment setup so it will be like a uh, one to five i think or four uh, part it will be there a simple simple part you can uh, toggle through it it will be within a simple uh, uh like the uh a simple uh, a group of that uh, the playlist it will be entering their amazon 2.0 you can go and find each and everything here so this entire video it contained for this entire home page and it's fully responsive you can go and just to see the responsiveness how it's working now you can you can make it more better you see you can put an uh, icon is here there is a lot of rooms to create uh, some of the very good scenario here so it depends on you how you want to do it or you want to do it or not it's up to you but in our first part we're having this entire scenario so in our second part we're gonna go and get all of those other features so till then finish it and all the best with the project we'll see you in our next video